This time on STV, we're here in Thompson, Manitoba, about to embark on an adventure that'll see us ride all the way up to Churchill on the shores of Hudson Bay. Stick around, because this one is going to be good. STV is brought to you by Yamaha, revs your heart. Ford F-Series, Canada's best-selling line of pickup trucks for 57 years. And by Polaris, think outside. This is day one of our two-day ride up to Churchill. We're going to start here in Thompson, and then we're going to ride 550 kilometers, more than half of that off-trail, all the way up to Churchill. Basically, we're looking at 24 hours of ride time in the next 48 hours. Now, this is definitely one adventure I'm looking forward to. We aren't traveling alone either. We're part of a larger group of riders and we're all in this adventure together. In total, there'll be eight customers on the trip with four guides to make sure we don't get into any trouble and to keep us going in the right direction. The timing of this trip is early March with ride days on the 7th, 8th and 9th of March. Then on the 10th overnight into the 11th, we're taking the train back from Churchill to our starting point in Thompson. Add in travel days to and from and in total, this is going to be an intense seven day trip. Meeting the other riders of the group at our starting point at the lodge just outside of Thompson, I can say for sure that we're all excited for this once in a lifetime experience and this morning, spirits are high. Once we get all of our sleds loaded up with our gear, this expedition will be ready to begin our quest for the bay. But before we start holding on to handlebars, I'm gonna take you through a conversation I had with our intrepid host for this adventure, Al McLaughlin of Heartland International Travel and Tours to get a better understanding of exactly what we're getting ourselves into. So Al, talk to me a little bit about the quest for the bay. Give me some history on this, uh, this event. So we were looking for a way to introduce uh, snowmobiling in Northern Manitoba to the rest of the world. We have great snow up here. Um, we have snow early and the snow stays late. Uh, we have wonderful um, snowmobile clubs that do great work on, on the trails, on the groomed trails. And we were really looking at something um, that would get people to come to Northern Manitoba. So when you add snowmobiles, we thought about where can we go from, from our cities in, in Northern Manitoba, for, from Thompson, and we thought about going to Churchill. Uh, Churchill's everyone's bucket list and just the adventure of, of going from, from Thompson to, to Churchill is, is great. It's a great adventure. You're going to see lots of things uh, on the tour. So walk me through what's going to happen over the next two-day adventure uh, going up to Churchill. So we're going to leave Saskia Rapids Lodge, which is just south of Thompson, mm -hmm. and then we're going to go on uh, the snowman trail that, that's uh, groomed by the uh, Thompson Club and uh, we're going to head north. We'll stop in Thompson to get a little bit of fuel just to top us up and then uh, we'll head right up to Gillum. Um, you're going to see a couple uh, generating stations so you'll see the, the four bay on, on one side and then it'll be a big drop where the, uh, the water will go through the generating stations and then we're going to get into Gillum mm -hmm. uh, which is a nice little community that's uh, again um, a long day. We're going to do <laughs> It'll be about 300 kilometers, so yeah, right ten, from start to finish. Hours. In about 10 hours, yeah. you know, you'll be doing 300 kilometers. Uh, with, with breaks in between, we'll take mm -hmm. reasonable breaks. And then uh, we'll overnight in, in Gillum and get rested up for, for the next leg of the journey. Yeah, and, and, and day two is, is the big day. I mean, it's a longer distance, but this is also uh, off trail. From Thompson to, to Gillum is trail riding and that type of adventure, but day two is, is when the, it gets a little spicier. Yeah, that, that's, that's the big day. Now, uh, we will drag um, the, the trail, so it'll, mm -hmm. be, it'll be dragged. It has been used before, as you say, by um, local trappers and fishers and, and local people who travel through. 
but it is isolated. Like there's, yeah. there's not a Starbucks on every corner. <laughs> so, you know, no. it, it is bush trail. It's an adventure. It is an adventure. And I mean, you're going to go up on the tundra and the snow gets blown off the, the tundra. So you're going to have very little snow up there. You'll be bouncing over, you know, a few mm -hmm. small rocks and, and frozen muskeg. Um, but you're going to then come down onto, onto rivers and you're going to have fresh powder. Mm -hmm. And you're going to see absolutely marvelous snow banks that the wind has blown over top the, the edge of the, uh, uh, of the river. So it'll, it'll just, it'll be a wonderful experience. And of course I have to ask questions about polar bears because Churchill is known for its polar bear population up here. Are we going to be seeing bears? We <laughs> will probably not be seeing bears. We're going to go close to the denning areas. So um, the mums right now are, are in the dens and they've given birth to their, their young ones. Um, they'll be coming out of the dens very shortly. Um, I hope that we don't see one because you don't want to, you want to see one afar. You don't just, want to see one close. I was just going to say, especially on a snowmobile, you're not so protected. So I'm okay with not seeing any bears you, while riding a snowmobile. That's right. Well, yeah, you don't want to get in between a mum and a cub. She's, no. she's not a happy girl. No, I she's wouldn't, very protective. Uh, wouldn't imagine. Yeah, very protective. So uh, again, I'm looking forward to this trip. Uh, it's going to be an amazing couple of days. Then we have another adventure on top of that because we're going to be loading our sleds on a train to get them back down. So even though uh, you know we've accomplished 24 hours of ride time in 48 hours and yeah. then a couple of days that are a little bit more relaxed in Churchill, um, we have to get the sleds back down, especially for customers who are bringing their own sleds on this adventure, which is one of the things you can do. Yeah. Uh, so that sounds like an interesting, uh, an interesting overnight train trip as well. There'll be a whole bunch of little things that you'll be able to tick <laughs> off your bucket yeah. list, you know, ride a train, uh, see the tundra, see the Churchill, go on a, a snowmobile adventure. You'll be able to check off a whole bunch of them by the end of this trip. After speaking with Al to get a better understanding of what lays ahead, I'm still a little nervous, but also more excited than ever about the upcoming adventure. Now, I'm sort of disappointed that there's probably not going to be any polar bears on this adventure, but I'm sort of okay with that fact as well, because after all, we're going to be out there with just snowmobiles as protection. But my plan is, if we do see a bear, that I'm going to smash Mark the camera guy in the knee so he can be food and I can get away. Because after all, when you see a polar bear and you're under attack, you don't have to be faster than the bear, you just have to be faster than somebody. Coming up after the break, we're going to frappe la rue to Gillum. This segment is brought to you by Ultimax. So this, uh, this little talk, I kind of want to talk about the sled that I'm on, which is a 900 Ace non-turbo expedition by Skidoo, and it's uh, black and white. And you know, normally on a trip, I'd be a little disappointed having an expedition to ride for 500 some odd kilometers. But I think up here with uh, the conditions that we're in, man, this is the best sled. Life is good in the Canadian North on a Skidoo expedition while you're on expedition. The big thing is, as long as it's faster than a polar bear, I don't really care. So the journey that we're on is from Thompson, Manitoba, all the way up to Churchill. And after talking with Al and learning a little bit more about the adventure that we're on, I mean, I think this is the type of adventure, if you've got reasonable snowmobiling skills, um, you can make it as far as the terrain goes. But this has got a remote feel to it up here. I mean, it, uh, you're out in the middle of nowhere. Not so much right now, but as time wears on and we're in the tundra, essentially, you know, it's, uh, and, and the terrain changes. I mean, right now we've got, we've got nice trees, 
We've got excellent groomed trails. Um, we've got lakes and swamp areas. I think here we're coming to a, a swampy area. Muskeg maybe is in there. But, uh, you know, you've got a, a varying terrain, which is very similar to what you'd see in Ontario or Quebec. I mean, feels a lot the same as that. But apparently as we go farther north, it's going to turn more tundra-like. And from what I gather, it's going to feel a lot like Labrador, where the trees, instead of being as tight together as that is, are going to, you know, get a lot smaller, uh, a lot more distance between them, a lot more, uh, more sparse, I guess you could say. And I'm looking forward to that part of the trip. But I think doing this trip, you also end up with this immense sense of accomplishment. I'm, that's what I feel I'm going to be looking for, is that sense of accomplishment when we pull into into uh, Churchill tomorrow night um, and I think you know that is going to make this trip for me feel like uh, again a bucket list trip I was super excited hearing about this trip when I first heard that this was on the menu for the season when I'm 80 years old I can be like yeah when I was a young whippersnapper I rode all the way up from Thompson Manitoba to Churchill and death was on my shoulder the whole way you know, I'm gonna be, it's going to be one of those stories for me. Now, again, I'm super stoked to be on this trip. Um, so far, it's just been trail rides, but we got a really good group of riders with us. They're excited about this trip too, and I'm looking forward to a whole lot more kilometers up ahead of us. So stay tuned. We got a lot more to come on this ride. It's going to be epic. This segment is brought to you by Ford. So it's gonna be a long day today. We figure uh, 12 hours, 12 hours running at least, and, uh, but should be a good time. Weather um, is gonna be about 18 throughout the day with winds gusting around 35 and, and gusting up to 54 from the north. So it shouldn't bother us too much. All right. Let's have some fun. So as soon as you're finished eating, if you want to grab your stuff, bring it out to the, uh, out to the uh, sleigh. All right, good job. It's day two on our quest for the bay. Now last night here in Gillum was a fantastic evening hanging out with this group. It's amazing how the common thread of snowmobiling can make new acquaintances feel like old friends. Today though is a brand new day and it's about to get spicy because from here to Churchill is about 300 kilometers and it's all off trail. It was fairly quiet though. I think as a group we were all pretty tired and everyone wanted to be rested up for today's leg of the adventure which is going to be even longer than yesterday's. Plus today's ride will take us through even more extreme territory all off road following hydro lines along with rail and riverbeds. In addition to the ride Gillum proved to be another interesting experience. Accommodations were way better than expected, especially since I originally thought we'd be sleeping in a trapper cabin. The Kettle River Inn is absolutely luxurious compared to a straw bed, with mice keeping your feet warm, which I thought I was going to be in for. And by the way, I have experienced that in the past. Overall, Gillum does have the feeling of an outpost town, with the hydro plant being the center of attention. Now, I'm not sure when I'll be back, if ever, but it's amazing the out-of-the-way places snowmobile adventures will take you to. But now, it's time for us to point our skis towards Churchill. Adventure doesn't begin to describe the feeling of a ride like this, especially when you're right in the middle of it. Leaving civilization behind this morning in Gillum, knowing that there isn't much between you and your destination other than a railside camp as a quick warming stop along the way, makes this trip a very serious one and can lead to trouble if you let it. Thankfully, with guides like Al, Claude and Remy, we all felt pretty safe knowing that they had our backs. Now, Claude and Remy even rode down from Churchill to Gillum the day before to make sure the trail was open and marked out, plus they're the ones carrying all of our fuel with them on their sleighs. 
tough and hardy are just a couple of the adjectives I'd use to describe our guides, but also everyone we've met along the way so far. There is definitely a real spirit of adventure to be found in the people here, which I think must go deep in the folks who choose to make northern Manitoba their home. As our ride continued on the way to Churchill, I never felt isolated or in danger at any time, but I did find myself thinking that things could get bad in a hurry and I'd better pay attention to what I was doing and how I was riding. One goofy mistake that would never be a problem back at home could be a nightmare here, so our pace was appropriate. And even though there are a few opportunities for speed, this trip isn't about that. Slow and steady wins this race. Good ride. Beautiful trail and Everybody seems to be enjoying themselves. Can't ask for a better day. Minus 18 with a bit of a wind, but you can't beat that. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's crazy up here. It's totally different than anywhere else. Yeah. It is pretty incredible. It's a great day. And you know what? The sun's coming through. The light's pretty good. You can just feel the heat come on to you, eh? Oh, when the sun came. Yeah, it's getting nice. Out there, yeah. it's still chilly, but it's getting nice. Mm -hmm. But I've been on groomed trails back at home that aren't as good as that. Like, <laughs> it's good. This segment is brought to you by Polaris. Okay, so we're a little over halfway to Churchill right now. We're at a little place called McClintock, which isn't a town, I think it's that place. Anyhow, it's warm inside, which is going to be a great break because I can tell you over the last hour or so, it's gotten a lot windier and it's gotten a lot colder. And I think the whole group is ready for a break. Plus, I think they got hot coffee and sandwiches in there. So I'm about ready to get off the of sleds, get inside, get warm because it's getting windy and cold. Today, a much different feeling out here on the trails. Way, way more remote. Spent a bunch of time getting here, practically all on, I think actually all on hydro line. So, uh, you know, over 200 kilometers on a hydro line. or about 200 kilometers on a hydro line. 170, I think, to get here. And it was, uh, I mean, it was exceptional. The, the boys, when they came down, uh, Remy and Claude, they drug a drag with them, a small little groomer to help uh, set up some snow so it was a little smoother but also a little bit more uh, packed so we didn't have to deal with cutting trail the whole way. But uh, from this point forward, for I think practically all the way into Churchill, we're down on this river. And they're talking about something like a 170 turns to get to, to, get to where we're going, so that's going to be amazing. But I have to say today, I mean yesterday, again it was pretty chill, easy day, relatively. Still had that uh, that north uh, feel to it, that remote feel to it, but nothing like today. Today's feel is next level. Just want to go up and rest and have some fun, have some fun, eh? Yeah, we'll kind of keep, uh, we'll see what happens. Just whatever you do, don't pass the orange building. I, I heard that, don't pass the orange building. <laughs> do whatever you want, just don't pass the orange building. Famous last words. I don't know what's on the other side of the orange building. Maybe, I don't know, the, the end of the earth is right there or something. It feels like it's the end of the earth. <laughs> if you're looking for a tour that's just not the same old, same old tour, this could be it. And like I said, I, this is one of those, those trips where you get, to, uh, you get to experience something super unique, very Canadian, and go into a place that's pretty spectacular that a lot of people, you know, know about and want to travel to and we're going there on snowmobiles I mean how great is that
The other piece of advice for a snowmobile adventure up here is dress warm. By the end of the day, when the sun was down, the cold was definitely starting to bite deep, and I was thankful for the first sightings of Churchill coming into view, knowing that warmth wasn't far away. Now, this was spring too, balmy weather for the region. I had on every layer of warm gear I had, and I wish I had more. Now, I wasn't worried about frostbite or anything like that. I was just feeling the cold a little bit more than I wanted to. I couldn't imagine the depth of cold here in the middle of winter. Hats off to the folks who work and play outside up here in the cold. We're here, we're in Churchill, we're at the Tundra Inn. It's pizza time and maybe a Tylenol and an adult beverage. <laughs> wow, we're here. 12 hours and 18 minutes. All off trail, 300 and some odd kilometers. Good day, good day. Now let's get inside, because it's still freaking winter here in a big way. It's cold. Ooh. Coming up in part two of this experience, we'll be discovering more about Churchill by spending a day in town and then wrapping this trip up by taking the train overnight back to Thompson. But that will be coming up in the next episode of STV. Closed captioning is brought to you by Yamaha. STV has been brought to you by CKX, where your passion. Best Western hotels and resorts ready to get away, and by Ultimax Belts, performance-driven, performance-proven.